Well, hi, everyone, and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, I stopped doing Flat Earth Debunk several years ago because it just wasn't worth my time, and I never really address specific Flat Earthers anymore. But I'm going to make an exception today. I want to talk about Flat Earther Dirt Cuz over on TikTok, who did a fantastic observation between two of the Hawaiian Islands 86.2 miles apart and came to some rather startling conclusions. I'd like to go over his observation and his methods, make my comments on it, and then just see how he reached his conclusions and what those conclusions were. Because I find this observation extremely encouraging. This is a flat earther that set out to actually do a real observation and did a fine job with it. I think that that needs to be acknowledged in the debunking community. Now, I've had some interactions with Dirt Cuz before. He seems to be a relatively pleasant and intelligent person. Uh, I've never had any issue with him. He does have very good equipment. He's got excellent cameras. And as you can see, he's got a Celestron C14 Edge just like I do. How he managed to get this thing to a roadside park, I don't know because I can barely lift mine. But I have to tell you, he demonstrated some commitment, that's for sure. So let's have him go ahead and talk about his observation. Now, I'm going to stop every now and then, and I'm going to put in a few comments, but I'm going to let him kind of tell his own story. He's been a flat earther since 2018. And he's done a number of observations, but this is a really serious one that he did, and I think he did it very well. Dirt goes here. Got my latest uh, long-distance uh, photo observation. Kauai to Oahu, 86.2 miles, uh, done in near-infrared. Celestron HD 14-inch, 39.10 millimeter focal length with the Nikon D850. Here's the observation point. Well-known Wailua River lookout. And we're gonna zoom down in. You see the river. You see the placard. That trash can was actually right where the tripod was set up. Okay, so right off the bat, we've got an excellent start here. Dirt Cuz has not only clearly identified all of his equipment, he has precisely geolocated himself as to where his observation point was. Um, again, this is not something that we normally see, and this is the right way to do it. So, let's go have a look at his target. Okay, now let's take a look at the target. Let's take a look at Oahu. And what I saw was a... Uh, uh, big military antenna on top of the highest peak on Oahu. There's not a lot of information on it. It's a military antenna that the uh, FAA uses. It sits right up there, right on that flat spot. The highest peak on all of Oahu. Nice flat ridge up there. I, uh, I make a yeah, a big deal here, making sure you guys see that flat spot up there. It's going to be important here in a few minutes. So I'd like to <clears throat> to uh, point out that this is the furthest gap in the main island chain from my observation point to the uh, antenna, which is really the only place I measured to. Uh, certainly can't be disputed 86.2 miles I was running peak finder so get ready for a screenshot to the 203 feet those are the coordinates right there and now we're going to start the video okay so now in addition to locating his observation point now he's actually doing the measurements and identifying his target so you see he's been very straightforward with coordinates, he's been very straightforward with distances, and he's pointed out the exact location of the antenna that he'll be looking at. Now we'll go ahead and have a look at his observations. Near infrared. Looks pretty huge. There's the antenna. I pause it here for a second. See it on the left top corner up there. You see some birds flying around. And you see the water moving. But everything's resolved. Top to bottom, left to right. Okay, so once again, excellent documentation on the part of Dirt Cuz. 
So he's got his infrared view in the background and he's got an inserted photograph of the site. You can very clearly identify the antenna. You can clearly identify it's the same antenna based on the shape. Everything is in focus and very clear. Excellent observation so far. Well documented. Now let's look at uh, what we actually saw. Okay, we're going to start out with Google Pro and we're going to do an overlay. I'm going to bring it into Photoshop. Now we're in Photoshop. The red line was the water. This was shocking for me too. There's the overlay. That's my video. And we'll adjust the opacity. This was shocking for me. That's why I sat on this for almost a month. Okay, you can see it in Google Pro. Now here comes Peak Finder. Now the problem with you guys in Peak Finder, just like me, Mike Snow taught me, so did the debungler. You've got to jack up the elevation to verify what you shot. So I was at 203 feet, and you see here I set Peak Finder to just under 10,000 feet, so I could see the whole island. Red line is the water. Here's my video. I did it in monochrome on Peak Finder instead of the native infrared. So basically we're seeing about 25% of the top of the island. The bottom 75% was obstructed. That was shocking for me. It is what it is though. You know, I've been looking at the Flat Earth community for over eight years now, and this is the first time I've had a flat earther say, look, this was not what I expected to see, but it is what it is. I mean, clearly we're only seeing a very small portion of the tops of those mountains. You know, there's none, oh, I can see it all the way down to the shoreline. He's actually saying what he really sees. And it's not what he expected. And he seems to be quite surprised by that, and he really was debating what to do about it because I think that he was just going over this and double-checking it. But we'll go ahead and let him continue. Again, this is the way you do actual science. You don't look for the results you want. You evaluate the results you get. It's like fingerprints, right? They match. So here we are in the Earth Curve calculator. No refraction. Over 3,000 miles of missing island. It's what we see. All right. Now we'll go back to uh, add the standard refraction. Standard refraction. And that drops it uh, down to 24, 2,500 feet of missing island. And these following pictures are more photos of it from different places on my island. But I have a message for Eric Dubay, Mark Sargent, David Weiss. Huh? Get some real camera equipment. The P1000, the P1100, they're not going to cut it. They're good cameras, but they're not that good. So I highly suggest that you guys invest in some real equipment and uh, stop playing around, right? Lighthouses, that's not, that's not good proof. This is proof. It's a globe. Get over it. And there you have it. Sometimes when you do an observation, you don't see what you expect to see. It is what it is. You have to accept the evidence that you get and try and figure it out from there, even if it doesn't fit your preconceived notion. One of the most famous experiments in all of physics was a failed experiment, and that was Michelson-Morley. They were looking to measure ether drift and ended up discovering that there was no ether. Aries failure is another example. So I'm going to call this observation Dirt Cuz's failure. Uh, why? Because he didn't get the results that he expected, so he ended up going with the actual results that he got without trying to shoehorn them into his preconceived flat earth. 
And when he did that, he came to a very good conclusion, and that is that the Earth is a globe. This is what happens when you do real science. Sometimes you get an unexpected result, but you have to accept the data. So well done, Dirt Cuz. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you again for stopping by and looking at my video. Stop by and leave a positive comment for him on his page on TikTok. And if you'd like, drop me a like and a subscribe. I'll see you again soon. Take care.